What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. We like magic a lot. And we've got a deck tag for you today, like we normally do, but this one's special. This is the first in our series of rotation proof decks. No Dragons of Tarkir or Magic Origins in this or any other deck for the rest of the season here. And I know this usually comes with a disclaimer that we don't know what's going to happen in the next set, in this case, Kaladesh. But it's always a good mental exercise to sort of take out some of the format's all star cards, like Dramoka's Command, Collective Company, and sort of see what can rise from the top with, in their absence. In this case, I get to do something that's going to be really cool, at least for me. Hope it's cool for you guys. I get to talk about Eldritch Evolution, finally. I've always been really high on this card. Since Eldritch Moon came out, I put it at number one in my top 20 Eldritch Moon cards, actually, because I think this card is going to make a splash at some point in its life cycle. Um, and in this deck, we're doing something really cool, at least to me, again. We're doing green-white Evolving Angels, at least that's a working title. Another one is Evangels, Evolving Angels. Uh, did they? Let's check it out. If you're going to play an Eldritch Evolution deck, you got to talk about Eldritch Evolutions. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. We're playing three copies of EE in the deck, and I don't think you need to play the pull playset or anything, because we are sort of dependent on it, but we're mostly just a mid-range deck that's sort of disguised as a combo deck, you know. Eldritch Evolution does an awful lot of work, and we are built around it for the most part, but we don't absolutely have to have it to win. We've got a good suite of very powerful creatures. We've got some removal in the deck. we got some pretty powerful stuff. So there are games where you just win off of the value of your creatures. But Eldritch Revolution, we've got an awful lot of tricks with, and I'll talk about it a lot as we move through the video here. If you're going to play Eldritch Evolution, you've got to play a bunch of creatures. It's part of the name of the game there. So, let's start with what I think might be one of the most important creatures in the deck, and it's surprisingly... Thalia's Lancers, which I'm going to play a three of here. Um, Thalia's Lancers has actually been really good, although you could probably slide it down to a two of. I just really, really like Lancers in this deck. We're playing ten different legendary creatures, and Thalia's Lancers is another card besides Eldritch Evolution that allows us to play a toolbox strategy. You know, two ofs, a lot of creatures, and since we have EE and Thalia's Lancers, we have plenty of things that will allow us to search up these creatures whenever we want to. Not to mention that just, you know, evolving a three drop into a Lancers, having a four power first strike body and going and getting whatever legend you want out of your deck is really really good value. Well, let's talk about those legendary creatures. That seems important for what the deck does. We'll play a two of Bruna and a three of Gisela to start things off. Our two first angels, there are a bunch of angels in this deck, um, but these are the two most important, almost certainly, and obviously you can meld them into Brisella, which we're going to be looking to do, and it will in the game a lot of the time, especially late when they're sort of out of removal. <laughs> Brisella can be really good. Although the two pieces are fine on their own, too, and there's lots of tricks, you know. One thing I do want to point out is that you can't get um, the cast trigger if you evolve Bruna into play, which can sometimes be important. But what people tend to forget about Bruna is that while you're trying to melt her, she's a 5-7 flying vigilance, which is a really, really good creature, and can often just end the game once you play her, you know? Gisela, the only 4-drop we're playing, but we are looking to evolve, um, what is it, 7 different 2-drops into specifically Gisela. And once we have a Gisela out, we can always evolve her into a 6-drop, place her in the graveyard, and then get her back once we cast our Bruna, melt into Brisella. It's that easy. We really don't mind sacking her to an Eld Eldritch Evolution at all. Um, but when Gisela is on the battlefield for you, she's a very solid creature, obviously. Four power, flying, first strike, lifelink, and the lifelink is very, very important in keeping you in the game so that you can get into sort of the later stages here. So Gisela is a very, very good creature, and once she's in the graveyard, she is in no way done. I'm also going to play two Abyssin, continuing the Angels here, just because she's one of the best creatures in the format, if not maybe the best. It's like her and Sylvan Advocate um, and Spell Queller, probably the top three there. She's in almost every deck with white. We'll do the same thing here. We can evolve three drops into her. That's good, but note new players that since you evolved, you sacrificed a creature to get Abyssin. That doesn't mean that Abyssin will flip next turn. Remember that. It's only if a creature dies while Avacyn's out. That said, Avacyn still does have a good interaction with Eldritch Evolution in that you can evolve a smaller creature like, say, Tireless Tracker um, into, say, a Thalia's Lancers. You put the Thalia's Lancers out, Avacyn will flip, and you'll get to keep your Lancers, they won't die to Avacyn's flipping, and you'll have a big six-power flyer in Avacyn, and you'll wipe all the smaller creatures off of their board. So Eldritch Evolution and Avacyn still work pretty well together because Eldritch Evolution triggers Avacyn, and nine times out of ten, you've gone and evolved into a creature that won't die to Avacyn's trigger. Sticking with the Angels, we're going to play a one of Linvala in the deck, which Gisela can evolve into. Really don't care about evolving Gisela at all, because putting her in the graveyard is no biggie as long as we can cast a Bruna 
later on in the game. And linvala has got a sick enter the battlefield trigger, so evolving her into play is always really, really nice. Finishing off the angels here, because there's a bunch of them, we're going to play a one of Sigarda. Hey, Igby, what's going on? Um, Sigarda's just really good in certain situations, obviously, the, giving you and humans control, like Tireless Tracker, Hexproof, very, very nice. And that last ability is good, too, just being able to generate creatures from just getting stuff out of your graveyard. That can also be nice when you need to go wide. And we'll finish off the Legends with two copies of Thalia here. Thalia is a flexible slot, but I do like her ability to sort of hold off opponents, you know, at least hold off their mana production for a couple of turns while you get a little bit more set up, and you don't mind evolving her if you absolutely have to. But again, this is a mid-range deck that can play Eldritch Evolution, so a lot of the times Thalia will stick around for a few turns and really hinder their progress which is what a lot of mid-range decks are looking to do on turn 3 anyway. So Thalia, just a very solid creature and can be evolved. But we're playing like 12 other creatures that aren't legends, so we should probably talk about them. They all serve pretty important purposes, starting with a 4 of Sylvan Advocate, just because, again, one of the best creatures in the entire format. We're playing a lot of lands in the deck, and we're looking to go fairly late. So Advocate is the new Tarmogoyf, like everyone's calling him, a little bit later in the game, and is a really good speed bump early in the game, you know, can stop the opponent from doing a lot of things as far as attacking um, on turn two and three. So Sylvan Advocate, very important in sort of impeding their progress and being very good late. So I wouldn't be caught dead not playing the card is all I'm saying. And we're going to play three copies of a slightly weirder two drop, Primal Druid. Primal Druid I found to be really, really good, although again, a flexible slot in the deck. But I do like Druid in that it's either very, very early game defense that we're looking to kill on blocks and ramp. That can happen. But it's, again, good speed bump will impede their progress early game. Or we can Eldritch Evolution, the Primal Druid, get some ramp and go get a four drop, Gisela in this case. So Primal Druid's good for a couple of reasons, you know, it halts them in the early game, or we can go ahead and get some ramp off of it, sacrifice it, and go put a Gisela into play. All these things are good. As far as other three drops, I'm going to play a whole four of Tireless Tracker in the deck. Pretty versatile card, you know, again, we're playing a bunch of lands, that works with Tireless Tracker. We're playing a couple of Evolving Wilds, those work really well with Tireless Tracker as well. Um, and a lot of times, even if you evolve this, you know, you'll play this turn three, on turn four you'll play a land, get a clue, and then evolve Tireless Tracker into a five drop. In that case, you've gotten pretty good value out of your tracker, you've gotten a five drop as well, that's not bad. And Tireless Tracker can also just be left out to get really, really big as the game goes on and end up drawing you a bunch of cards. So one of the better creatures in the format, but I'm not too afraid to evolve him if he's gotten you some value in the form of clues already. Or you can just end the game once it gets big enough. That happens too. And the last creature that we're playing is just a one-off copy, weirdest card in the deck, of Green Warden of Murasa, which looks pretty flexible, but there are a ton of tricks with this thing, you know? You can say evolve a Gisela into it. That puts a Gisela, by the way, into your graveyard. Now you can either leave it there, or once Green Warden comes into play, you can just put the Gisela back into your hand. You can do that with anything that you evolved, actually. You can sacrifice the creature, go get Green Warden, put it into play, and then just put the creature you sacrificed back into your hand. It's actually a pretty slick piece of tech with Bruna that's happened a couple of times. You have a Bruna out, you can sacrifice um, her to Eldritch Evolution, and go get Green Warden. Remember that you can evolve backwards and sideways, same casting cost. You don't have to go up with it. So there's a slick trick. You have a Bruna out, evolve it into a Green Warden, then get your Bruna back and put it in your hand with the Green Warden. That way you can get that cool cast trigger off the Bruna again. Pretty nice. And if you evolve the Green Warden into a Bruna, that can happen too, then you can choose to exile the Green Warden and get another card out of your graveyard put it in your hand. That is just tons and tons of value, whether you're evolving into him or evolving, you're sacking him to evolve into a Bruna or anything else, really. So Green Warden, I have really, really liked as sort of a techie pick in the deck. Although, again, could be a flexible slot, I have really enjoyed, like, all the tricky stuff that he does. We're going to play some other spells, though, in the deck that aren't creatures, so boo, right? we got to do it. Um, we're going to play four copies of Declaration and Stone to start it off. Our only removal, but it's one of the more solid removal pieces in the format. I mean, super splashable, just the one colored mana. Only costs two, so it's good on turn two, and it's good on turn eight. You know, just fantastic thing that only that shuts down token strategies and just will remove the best creature from their side of the board, no questions asked. So, play Declaration. 
We're going to finish off the deck with a two of Oath of Nyssa here. Just really like the card selection, especially on turn one. I mean, the card's fine on like turn nine too, but we really want some action on turn one. And this kind of card selection, whether to make sure our mana's not so shaky or to get a good creature out of it, all of it's good. And we're playing 25 lands in the deck, and it's a pretty easy land base to put together. Just the green white lands, a couple of evolving wilds because they work well. You know, we've got a lot of things that cost either two green or two white, and sometimes you want to get the exact right sources so evolving wild's good and it's good with um tireless tracker as well too sometimes getting you two clues in the same turn so evolving wilds i think is definitely playable a little bunch of forests and planes because you know green white basics and here's a working sideboard here and all of these picks are sort of responses to things that i think might happen upon rotation stasis snare very very good against Emrakul. it's instant speed but it's not an instance so you can hit them before they're able to mind slaver you that's really good. Also works against Ormondal, by the way. Um, Root Out, I think will be good because we're moving into Kaladesh, and Kaladesh is going to have a bunch of artifacts in it. So Root Out is very, very good. Um, also has some synergy with Tireless Tracker as well. Gideon, I'm playing a four of because, again, I think Control, whether it's blue-white spirits or maybe just a, you know, a blue base control deck, is probably going to at least attempt to be a thing after rotation. I think Gideon's very good against those decks and a bunch of other decks when you just want to go sort of, you have a go wide strategy. And his Anthem is pretty good in a deck that has 25 creatures in it. So Gideon seems nice. And then Planar Outburst, you know, I kind of wouldn't mind taking out Athalia's Lancers and putting in a one of Planar Outburst in the main because that is the most often cited out thing. Um, but Planar Outburst is very good and it's maybe going to be, barring a Wrath of God or Damnation reprint, you know, it's maybe going to be the new go-to you know, mass removal in the format. It all depends. Maybe we'll keep doing tricks with Kozilek's return. I don't know. But it's going to be a really good piece of mass removal in the format. And it's very good in the sideboard. If we come across anything creature-based, Planar Outburst goes in. And here are your power rankings right here. I've scored the deck a 69, which is a good score. You know, 70 is usually a very competitive score. And this hinges right on the edge of that. I have really liked sort of how this deck has performed in the six weeks that I've been brewing it up here. So let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. Proxy it up or just put it together. If you do want to put it together um, on TCG Player, the main deck will cost you about $200. I know that's a lot, but it's not as much... As some of these decks right now in the format, and the uh, sideboard will cost you 75 mostly because of the four Gideons. But with that said, I always got to talk about what we're doing next time, and I've got a lot of content coming up here in the next few weeks before Kaladesh um, spoilers start. That's going to happen September 1st. They're going to start unveiling Kaladesh at the um, World Championship here very, very soon. But before that happens, I'm going to try to get a couple of things out, namely a couple of videos dealing with the rotation. I'm going to do the top 10 format defining cards that are rotating and sort of how their rotation may affect the format. I've also got the top 10 cards that never got a chance. The top 10 cards that could have been contenders. You know, a lot of buzz about certain cards and a lot of like, we can build around this, but it just never happened. I'm going to sort of eulogize those cards and lament them having never been a thing. Um, and as far as deck techs go, which is what everyone wants, I'm looking to get out Red Green Wolves, Bone Throne, to the Red Green Wolves players, I'm going to do that. And then, um, four color Deploy the Gatewatch. Basically a four color Super Friends deck that plays everything but blue. I've got that all but finished and I want to bring that to you as quickly as, as, quickly as I can as well. But that's all the content for now. If you enjoyed said content, like said content, just hit the thumbs up button, it's that easy. Subscribe if you're new, and you can also share if you want to do all that stuff. But you know, who wants to do that, right? Do it. Anyway. Anyway, I'm Dev from SVMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.